Some social media guidelines that can make you or break you. Day 44. This is the 365 Days of Multi-Level Marketing Journey to Freedom Podcast with Rome Bachelor, where Rome shares his daily journey from down and out to total financial freedom in one year, along with pro tips, tricks, strategies, and tools to help you join in on the journey. Now, here's Rome with today's Journey to Financial Freedom Podcast. So today we're not going to get into an extreme or deep social media marketing training. I don't particularly use a lot of social media personally yet at this time because I love doing what works for me already before social media was invented. But I do implement some of it and I have taken a lot of trainings. So I think I have a few little tips and philosophies and guidelines that I've picked up from some of the very best social media trainers in the industry. Spent probably well over a thousand dollars on courses and trainings in the area. Read several books on it and the training does evolve and change and grow uh, over time. But the guidelines are the same. The guidelines stay. And I want to share a few because you can destroy your business, your reputation, and even lose some friends if you're using social media incorrectly. So today, day 44, I wanted to share a few thoughts with you that could really keep you uh, from destroying your credibility and your relationships and your business um, by a dumb, stupid mistake that you could have avoided and give you a few tips to get easier and better and more predictable success using social media that you can apply today starting right now. So with that, number one is what is your philosophy? Do you think that being spammy? Do you think that being salesy? Do you think that being pushy? Do you think that coming across as obsessed is appealing to people. There is a time that being obsessed does attract people because they see you're serious, you're dedicated, and they want to be involved with somebody that's dedicated because it causes them, if they're already interested, to become more dedicated. But on social media, are you using that to motivate an existing team? Or are you using your social media to attract new people who are not already interested? Are you trying to use it as a way to get people who are uh, not in your involved in your business or your product to take a look at your business or your product. And if you are, you don't want to run them away with obsession when they don't want to be like, they don't want to come across that way themselves. And whatever you do with them is what they think they have to do to build the business. And if they are not sure they even like it yet or have any interest or use for it yet, why would you make them think they have to be all in before they even know if they like it. That's just going to be repulsive and turn them away. Like nobody is serious before they join. That's a mistake. I actually heard one a leader recently had a conversation with a leader whom I deeply respect say, well, if they're serious, they'll do this. But they're not serious when they're looking. That's ridiculous. That's terrible. Uh, a, a terrible miscalculation, I believe, because nobody is serious until they're serious. And getting serious is a process of raising belief over time that doesn't happen before they join or the day they join. Getting serious is something that happens with commitments and belief that develop. And there are people who are in another company that may be serious and their company failed them for whatever reason or turned them away. They didn't pr- you know, something happened that they didn't, they didn't feel comfortable with and they're looking for another company and they are serious day one. That can happen. But for the average person who's just looking for a way to, for a product to solve some, some problems in their life, maybe earn it free, maybe make some extra money or, you know, ideally would love to find a, a six figure or seven figure opportunity if the right thing came along. They're not going to be serious day one because they're not convinced yet. So you have to take baby steps. The easier, smoother, more relaxed the, 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 the transition, the more normal you come across, the more you'll be appealing to people and the bigger your net to capture, if you will, people who will find it appealing and beneficial to them to become involved at some level, either with the opportunity or the product or both, right? 
So keep in mind that soft cells, soft cells, baby steps are key. See, my philosophy, and this is something that I use whether it's offline or online, it's very, very vital to understand that in the beginning, all you want to do is till the soil and build some curiosity. You're not trying to put a big tree in their yard. You're, you're not trying to make them a, a mature uh, tree bearing fruit day one. What you're trying to do is first till the soil of their receptivity, of their mind, of their, of their attention, so that when you plant the seed or the idea or see, have them see a presentation or try a product sample, that they're receptive to it because of the environment of curiosity that you created up front. See, curiosity is gentle. Curiosity is soft. Curiosity building is not salesy. But if you try to go f to serious immediately, you're going to turn people off. You can be serious, but you and you can convey that you're serious, but you don't need to come across like a crazy person. Otherwise, they'll tend to turn away. Now, you can say, hey, I'm serious. I found something. I, I found what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Might not be for you. Uh, but I'd love to you be aware of what I'm doing just in case you know somebody or maybe it'll catch your attention at some point in your life. You might want to see what I'm doing, right? So it was more gentle. You can still say I'm serious, but you can do it in a very gentle, soft way that will capture their attention enough that maybe they'll be a little curious. Well, what is this? So curiosity is what you go for. So go from curious and incrementally build up to serious. Go from curious to serious. Not from serious day one or moment one. Start with curiosity and you'll have a much better receptivity to what you're doing. And then when you do the other things we teach, where you stay in communication, where you're sharing information, where you're getting them around the team, where you're getting them around the information. Remember my favorite podcast, Day 15 episode, The Campfire? Well, that is the key to getting people who want to be serious, serious, who are willing, who have potential to be serious and committed, committed. Because you got them around the campfire, but you didn't throw them in the fire. You, you slowly let them to the warmth. And the way you do it is you build incremental. Go, your process needs to be incremental from curious to serious. That's online. That's offline. That's no matter what you're doing to build, that should be your winning philosophy. And with that, do you think by spamming everyone with your link in your inbox or your email do you think that's be building curiosity or is that just throwing your cards on the table and being a little pushy salesy do you think that putting pictures of your product links to join your opportunity or your 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 recruiting video right on your facebook wall you think that's gonna build curiosity or is that gonna feel like you're desperate is that going to look a little desperate a little in a little bit turn offy spammy as they call it of course it will so what do you need to do you need to listen to this compartmentalize compartmentalize on your facebook wall or whatever social media you're using you can hint to something, build curiosity about something, tell stories without being specific. You could say congratulation to, congratulations to such and such on our team who just lost 80 pounds over the last six months, four months, what have you, on our weight loss product. And not say anything else. Just, you know, Thumbs up, you know, hats off to whatever. Uh, shout out to, you know, Denise Smith or Denise Johnson or whatever for uh, getting her first uh, $500 check in our uh, team. 
business, you know, or whatever. And then let people who are curious, that'll catch your attention. That'll make people curious. Because you didn't name the name of the company. You didn't name the name of the product. You left something for curiosity. And people's psychology wants to know the rest of the story. If they are hungry, they will see and notice the smell of food. If they are hungry, they will notice the signs for the restaurant off the highway. If they are full, it's going to go right in one, in their ears and right out the other, right through in their eyes, in the back of their mind, and they won't even consciously pay attention. They won't give it a, a, a first thought sometimes, let alone a second. But if they're hungry, if they're looking, if they're finding, looking for a solution in their life for extra income or to lose weight or for better skin or what have you, then... They will pay attention and they can ask, but do not be in too invitey, do spammy or anything. I wouldn't even invite people unless you know what you're doing. What's best is to go for curiosity and not make it every post you do either. Be normal. You can put some funny quotes, some funny videos, some success quotes. That's good. See, because even, even success quotes are or recommending a book you're reading or something alludes to the, at least in the same ball field as your business, uh, but or even weight loss tips, right? And then when you share that somebody lost weight, your audience has already been paying attention that you're sharing tips on weight loss. You're sharing tips on, you know, building a, a, a being a better leader or building a team. And those little images, those pictures, those you know, uh, success quotes and such are building a little bit of uh, attention because they are noticed, they're liked, they're shared. Then you can go to the message box and say, hey, thank you for liking my post and go like some of their stuff and share. As long as you really genuinely like it, be genuine, be for real. Don't be weird. You know what? Be normal, but be normal with a game plan that is effective. Be normal, but be a normal with a game plan that is effective on purpose. Be on purpose. Have a strategy, but do it in a normal way and not a pushy, weird way and build curiosity and you'll have a lot more success. Then compartmentalize and then go take those people that respond and now take it to the message box one at a time without giving a link just having a conversation. Thank you for liking that. Hey, I just want you to know that I appreciate you liking that post, you know, about my friend, you know, Sarah Smith, who lost, you know, 80 pounds. Um, and, uh, you know, I myself have lost 30 so far, and I'm really, really loving it. And, and uh, so just a thank you. And how, what's going on with your life? And change the subject. But you see what you did? You took it to the next step. You took it to a conversation, but in a different compartment. You compartmentalized and took it off of that platform to another location, which is now the message box, right? Then you can take it if they have any questions. They're going to ask you, well, what is the product anyway? Now you can take it to the telephone. You can send them stuff by email because they're asking. You can message them the link if they ask for it. But do it with permission. Permission marketing. Before you send links, always get their permission. Because when it's with permission, they'll receive it. When you just force it on them, they pull away. It's like, are they leaning into you when you're speaking or are they leaning away? You know, figuratively and, and literally, but figuratively, what are you creating? The lean in or the lean out effect? And so if you build curiosity and you do it with permission, you're more likely to get the lean in effect. And then you share your link. Then you share your video. Then you share your opportunity or your product. And then it'll be better received. And nothing ever felt weird or obnoxious or pushy. Or you're not one of those people, right? And I've made the mistake myself. I've done it myself when I didn't know better. This is a, a learning experience because social media was new for a lot of people and we misunderstood how to use it properly in the beginning and some people still misunderstand even companies out there 
that are doing millions of dollars in sales uh, and hundreds of millions of dollars in sales. Some of, there are some billion dollar companies teaching people to do it wrong. Listen to the experts who are training on this that are getting results and model what they say and do and you'll get results too. So with that, that's day 44, some social media marketing guidelines that'll make your business or break your business. That's today's day 44. Thank you.